Hey there everybody, Sage Popham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And in this week's episode of the blog, I wanna talk about the dynamic around dosing herbal medicines. You know, there's always this big question amongst herbalists that are just getting started or people that are just getting, moving towards that level of becoming a practicing herbalist, which is how much of a remedy do I give? And uh, this is a really big question. I get this one all the time. And unfortunately, there is no real straight answer to this question. Um, you know, when it comes to dosage of an herbal medicine, you really have, in a way, two very different schools of thought on this subject. On the one hand, you have more of what we would call low dosers. These are herbalists that tend to use herbs in drop dosages and that's really kind of using herbs more from I guess I would say more of a homeopathic orientation. Um, this is an approach that you know the the renowned herbalist Matthew Wood has really um, brought onto the forefront of herbalists kind of outside of the sphere of homeopathy and really what's going on when you're using a plant in very low doses and I'm saying like one to three drops typically is when you're using a plant in that level of a dosage, you're not actually getting really like a distinct biochemical effect on the body, right? Uh, when you take a drop of a tincture, you're really working more with the vital force of the plant and the vital force of the person's body and how their body is gonna respond to the presence of the herb. And this is kind of juxtaposed to the other end of that spectrum, which is a bit more of the high dose end of things, right? Where, you know, there's some herbalists out there that will administer five milliliter doses of a certain herb. And this is a little more common in kind of the phytotherapy practice. And when we're using herbs in doses of up to five mils, which, you know, just for perspective's sake, for those of you in the United States, you know, it's really standard, like when you go to the store or an herb shop and you buy a bottle of tincture, that's like a one ounce bottle. So if you're giving five milliliter doses, that's literally six doses in that bottle. So, you know, if you're giving five mils three times a day, that's two days worth of an herb, right? So that's a pretty high dose. And when you're giving someone a remedy at that level, you're really getting a much more distinct biochemical effect in the body, meaning that the plant's constituents are directly influencing the body's physiology. And that's kind of this polarity that, that we see in herbal dosage is like low dose is more this, the vital force of the body is responding to the plant Whereas high dose, it's more the plant biochemically acting on the body. And, you know, both sides can sometimes kind of look down on the other side and be like, well, there's no way that, you know, the high dose people are like, well, there's no way one drop can do anything because you need, you know, this amount of these constituents that have the primary medicinal effect of that plant. Um, and you're not gonna get that in a low dose. And a lot of the low dose people are sometimes like, man, that high of a dose, you're ki it's kind of aggressive, like you're kind of overriding the intelligence of the body. And myself, I always like to be in the middle. And you know, for me, sometimes I use very low dose of plants. Sometimes I use higher dose of plants. And I think it just really depends on the person. It depends on the condition. It depends on the plants that I'm using. It depends on how long I want them to be working with that remedy. Or is it an acute condition? Is it a chronic condition? Is it kind of superficially in the body, like more on the surface of the body? Or is it deep in the body? These are all things that I ask myself when I'm considering how much of a remedy do I give to someone. But, you know, I think this is one of those things that a lot of, it, it can kind of be an obstacle for a lot of herbalists. Like it, the question of how much do I give, unfortunately prevents people from giving a remedy because they're like, well, I don't know how much to give and I don't want to give too much and I don't want to give not enough. So I'm just not going to give any. And, you know, one of the things about 
a majority of herbal medicines that we're using at least in Western herbalism, is that we're working with very safe, very gentle acting plants and the, the potential of actually doing physical harm to someone is actually relatively low. And when it comes to how much to give, you know, I always say a good starting point if you're kind of wanting to be in the middle of low dose, high dose, is about 30 drops a, 30 drops a dosage. And generally, people will start with about three times a day. Like that's a good general rule of thumb for how much of an herb to give. And for me, when I'm working with someone, that's it's very adjustable, it's very flexible. So for example, if I'm working with someone to help them get better sleep at night, right? and I give them a formula of valerian and skullcap and passionflower, right? Which is a very classic three herb formula, hypnotic nervine formula to help people get better sleep. And just on a side note, that's a really great formula because um, it's actually constitutionally quite balanced because valerian's pretty warming and skullcap is pretty cooling and passionflower is pretty neutral. It's right in the middle. So you can generally give that formula to people that are a little on the warm side or on the cool side and it tends to balance itself out. But um, so say I give that formula to someone to help them sleep and I have them take, you know, 30 drops, maybe a half hour before bed and then another 30 drops right when they're getting into bed, right? And that's pretty good dosing strategy for sleep and say they, it gets them to sleep. They, they fall asleep quickly. Uh, they sleep all throughout the night, but then they wake up in the morning and they're super groggy and tired, right? So when I get that information on a follow-up, it's like, oh, okay, you're feeling really groggy. Well, maybe that was too high of a dose. So let's cut it in half. Let's try 15 drops 30 minutes before bed and another 15 drops at bedtime. And then upon follow-up, they're like, no, I wasn't getting enough sleep. I couldn't fall asleep. I was waking up throughout the night. It's okay, well, that was too low of a dose. So then let's like meet it in the middle. And so it's kind of this fine-tuning process with dosage that again, just really depends on the person, the situation, and the herbs that I'm giving. So I think it's really common for people to feel like they have to get it right the first time, right? And you don't, right? It's a process, it's, it's changeable. You're working with someone and kind of exploring their, their health and their life and the herbs and how they're responding to the herbs and adjusting as needed. You know, that was actually a piece of what I call clinical gold that I got from the great herbalist, Michael Tierra. And I remember I was in this, um, I was at a herb conference at the Brighton Bush Herb Conference and I was in a class with Michael Tierra on tongue diagnostics and uh, he was uh, he was sharing about tongue diagnosis and and then like on this little side note that he said he was like he was talking about giving a remedy and follow-ups and things like that and then he was like, yeah, so, you know, but, but the, the, the remedy that you give and how the person reacts to it is actually just part of your diagnosis. So anyways, back to tongue, and I was like, wait, what? Like, that's amazing. Like, think of that. The remedy that you give someone and how they react to it is part of your assessment process. You don't have to get it right the first time. A lot of people don't get it right the first time. But when they give that remedy and then they follow up with that person and see how they reacted to it, that's more information that helps you to further clarify and understand what's going on with their body, their condition, their symptom, and what might be the most appropriate remedies for you to be giving them. So again, you don't have to get it right the first time, and it's really important to recognize that you're not gonna get it right the first time, right? That's why they call it being a practitioner, right? Because we're practicing, we can't expect to be perfect. So the other thing about dosage that's really, really important, and, and, and this piece is, is pretty critical, and that is that you have to know what your low-dose herbs are, right? These are those herbal medicines that 
have a very, they're, they're stronger, right? They have a stronger biochemical effect. They have a stronger physiological effect. And if you give them in too high of a dosage, you know, it might cause some discomfort for people, right? And so you really got to know those remedies right off the bat. You know, for the herbalists that are just getting going, you know, generally I think it's good to not work with those herbs until you understand them a little bit better. Um, but you know, one common one, you know, that I think of in this regard is lobelia, right? To me, lobelia is an indispensable herbal remedy, right? I mean, this plant relaxes tension and spasm like no other herb that I know. And, but it's a relatively low dose plant, right? I mean, lobelia is very, very active in, you know, anywhere between one to five drops. Um, if you give more than that, in some people, it can make them very nauseous, and actually it's an emetic, and so it can make someone purge, right? And so we don't want to do that usually, right? I mean, in traditional systems of medicine, giving an emetic is actually, you know, a therapeutic category, but for the most part in our modern day of herbal medicine, we're not really uh, <laughs> wanting to give herbal medicines to make people throw up, right? Obviously, it's not very comfortable. And uh, that can kind of red flag you a little bit, right? So, so lobelia is one to come to mind. Another one is poke root. Poke root is an incredible alterative lymphatic agent. Um, it's a, an incredible alterative remedy for cleansing the body of metabolic waste products. But it's very, very strong, right? It's if you give it in a in a high dose, it can really upset someone's stomach. It can be kind of almost caustic in a way. And so you want to really give that remedy in a lower dose as well. The other one that classically isn't really considered a low dose herb, but it is one that I always say you kind of got to be careful because it's strong, is cayenne pepper, right? I mean, if you give someone a whole bunch of cayenne, that's going to be pretty uncomfortable, right? I mean, it's like their blood circulating and they're hot and they're sweaty and their face gets really red and they, you know, sometimes their stomach can get a little uncomfortable from it, right? So that's a remedy that you generally want to give in a little bit of a lower dose too. Um, so these are just learn those remedies that you generally don't want to give in too high of a dosage. Now there are certain plants that are for the like super advanced practitioners that you know you have to be really careful with. Usually those plants are reserved for you know like naturopaths that are also using herbal medicines. Things like lily of the valley or digitalis. Those remedies that have what are called cardiac glycosides that are really working on someone's heart and you got to be really careful with how you use those herbs. Personally, I haven't really got, I'm not even at that level of using those herbs. So I just wanted to take this time to talk about dosage because it's a big question. It's a big point of confusion. And I think one of the best ways to understand this is to experience it, right? I always say, you know, on the plant path, and especially the path of becoming a practicing herbalist, it's really important for our knowledge and our understanding of herbal medicine to not just be intellectual. Obviously, there's a lot to learn, so it's good to read books and watch YouTube videos or listen to podcasts or go to conferences and workshops and do programs and learn as much as we can, but we don't want that to replace our experience, right? It's one thing to have intellectual knowledge, but it's a whole other thing to have experiential understanding. And so, to me, one of the best ways to kind of get this dosage thing a little more clear is to just work with it yourself, right? If you're you know, one thing I always encourage my students to do is pick one plant a month, right? One plant a month and just go super deep into that herb. And when you're doing that, work with your dosage, right? Maybe, maybe take two weeks with that plant and take three drops three times a day and just note what happens. Note your body, the, the, the response that you have to that remedy. And then maybe the next two weeks, take five mils of tincture three times a day and see what happens. And now you've experienced that spectrum. And, you know, if you're working with an herb like 
Oregon grape root, right? It's like, whoa, five mils three times a day. My appetite was increased, my bowel movements increased, but boy, my mucous membranes started to really dry out. And geez, I started to feel really cold, right? It's like, that's such valuable information so that when you give that remedy to someone, you're gonna know that it's gonna have that effect on their body, on their constitution, and that's gonna really clarify how to find that right, um, that right level of dosage for that particular person, their particular condition, and with the particular herbs that you're giving. So in general, to kind of recap, you know, what I think is a good place to start <clears throat> for most herbs in tincture form is about 30 drops three times a day. It's just a really good baseline place to start. When it comes with things like infusions and decoctions or like teas and things like that, you know, the general recommendation that I've noticed in a lot of herb books, like Western herb books, is about a teaspoon of herb for every eight ounces of water. So a teaspoon of herb for every cup or teaspoon of formula. Now, that's in the West. And that actually, to me, is actually a pretty low dose. Like to me, that doesn't make a super strong tea. Um, you know, when we study things like Ayurveda or Chinese medicine, man, they like they administer like a lot of remedy, you know? I mean, some of the in Ayurveda, some of those plants they're administering like 5 gram doses of powder, right? They're like pretty liberal. Chinese medicine, some of those decoctions are really quite potent. So for me, when it comes to infusions and decoctions, I actually tend to triple it. So I'll do about a tablespoon of herb per eight ounces of water. And I think that yields a much more medicinal effect. Um, it yields a stronger tea. I, I just, that's kind of my orientation. When I drink a cup of herbal tea, I, I really like it to be pretty strong and not just like a, a nice beverage, right? Um, of course, it's nice to drink herbal tea as, you know, for enjoyment, but when we're really going for a distinct medicinal effect, personally, I like to make those infusions and decoctions really quite strong. Um, <clears throat> so, Hopefully that clarifies a little bit for you this big question about how much do I give of an herb, dosage strategies, and things like that. Again, experience this for yourself. That is the best way to learn how to specifically dose each of your herbal medicines that you're working with and to play around with it in different forms. Like, yeah, drink a teaspoon in eight ounces of water and note the effect. Drink a tablespoon in eight ounces of water and note the effect. And you know, I think a really great herb to, to experience this spectrum with is chamomile, right? Most of us are super familiar with chamomile tea, right? I mean, I, I was raised in a really conventional family, right? I mean, we, we used, you know, went to regular doctors. I got pumped full of antibiotics my whole childhood, right? It's like, but I still knew about chamomile tea, right? And we all kind of are familiar with the like celestial seasonings tea bag of chamomile, right? Where it's kind of this nice, gentle, mild, aromatic, kind of sweet tasting tea that's really great for kids. You know, kids will drink it and we're like, yeah, chamomile, it's nice, it's yummy, it tastes good. Um, so one thing I encourage you to do is maybe take a mason jar and fill it maybe a third to a halfway full of chamomile flowers and pour boiling water over the jar all the way up to the top and, and close the lid and let it sit for 20 minutes and then drink that tea, right? I encourage you to like literally do that because it shows you that chamomile is incredibly bitter, right? Most people don't know that chamomile is actually a really bitter plant. It stimulates digestion and it has this whole bitter tonic effect, right? But we're not going to experience that side of chamomile if we only are used to like tea bags of it, right? And so that different spectrum of dosage in terms of like in a tea, the volume of herb you're putting to the ratio of water actually changes kind of the medicinal effect of the plant and it makes more, much more distinctly uh, medicinal tasting, right? So that's a really good way of understanding this spectrum of dosage 
And whether you're in the low dose school or whether you're in the high dose school or whether you're somewhere in between, it's all good, right? To me, it all works, it's all good. And the, the most important thing is that we're helping people with the plants that we know and love. So thanks so much for checking out this episode of the blog. If you're watching this anywhere but evolutionaryherbalism.com, head on over there. We've got tons of free videos and training and resources there for you. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, The Plant Path, on Stitcher and iTunes. And if you are subscribed to the podcast and can take a couple minutes, leave us a review. Let us know what you think. We really appreciate it. And thanks so much for tuning into this episode. Until next time, take care and be well.